Hey y'all, William D. the Punk Up Prairie. Now there's been that nagging question hanging out there throughout the ages, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, my buddy, Day Parker, who has recently launched his own YouTube channel, Day Parker Norfolk, check it out, is on his way here right now to show me how to scramble up his world famous and delicious dense and creamy eggs, which should in fact dismiss any future debate regarding the chicken or the egg and any relevancy and importance as to which came first. Because one thing's for certain, Dave's eggs are gonna be right on time. And Dave's gonna show y'all how to fix them too. So don't go nowhere, cause you don't wanna miss this. Parker. How's it going? I guess, oh, I guess we got a boat. Welcome to the Pongo Prairie. Hey, Bill. Hey, buddy. <laughs> so, how was it that you and I got connected? Uh, I think it was collard greens. Why was it? What do you mean collard greens? Well, it was right before Thanksgiving, I think. Right. Um, or between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Was this on you, my radio show? You were on the radio talking yeah. about fixing collars and guys were calling in and telling <laughs> right. you their recipes and I said well they all sound pretty good but I'm going to send them straight send you <laughs> some collard green right. recipe and it's going to rock you and I call it Dixon's Tent Camp Collars right and the reason I call it Dixon's Tent Camp Collars is because at Thanksgiving we're always at my hunting camp in the mountains of Virginia yeah and one of the things I make is the collard greens to contribute to what everybody else has got going on I don't know if you ever tried them or not, but... It, mm, I don't think so. I think it sounded got, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> but anyway, you know where to find the recipe again. Yes, I do. And I think that's how it all started. And then you invited me to call in. And you were a guest on my show? Yep. Man, don't ever admit that on camera, Bill. <laughs> Why? <laughs> right. Land's best. That's right. It says so right here. Only the best. <laughs> all right. All right, so I love having scrambled eggs in the morning. And, but I don't like just any kind of eggs. I'm a little picky about it. So you can have light, fluffy eggs, or you can have dense, creamy eggs, and that's the way I like mine. What about you? Dense and creamy? Dense and creamy. Is that all right with you? It sounds good to me. Good, because I hope so, because <laughs> that is by far the most fattening version of that. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. I'm wasting away to nothing down here. Now listen, the whole difference between light and fluffy and dense and creamy is how you treat the moisture within the eggs that we're going to scramble and we'll get to that coming up in a second. So we're going to do five total eggs, four full ones and one with a yolk. And I want your help with showing me how to separate the eggs, all right? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to, well, you're the, go ahead, you're a professional. You're saving yolks, right? Yep. You just rock it back and forth and let that white drip right off the edge. And she goes. All right, now we're gonna use the yolks in four of the eggs. We're gonna use the whole egg in four and the yolk in just one. So I've already, so that's fine. So the rest of we need the whole egg. Oh, the whole egg, so yeah. we're going here with it, right? Yep. Okay. I've already messed him up. Is <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing what we're supposed to do? Yep. Three. That's three total. All right. That's four. Yeah. We're doing five, right? Yep. I'm so sorry. I didn't know there was going to be math in this one. Okay, so we got five <laughs> eggs. Now, the key part of this is coming up. So we got to scramble. Where's your fork? All right. Fork's what Grandma Dixon always there used. There you go. All right. So we're going we're gonna to scramble our eggs. It's like the Food Network, you got to show everything. Super up close. All right, so we're gonna just scramble these up, and this next part is actually gonna take about 15 minutes. But it's an easy 15 minutes because we don't have to do anything. We get to let the salt do all the work. Except I'm gonna be prepping up what yes. I'm gonna go fix up to go along with it. All right, any hints yet? Can you tell me yet? Hints? Oh yeah. Right, what you gonna what you gonna make? Well, you gotta have some country ham. Yes. And. The reason you gotta have salt. you want you want sea salt, yeah, kosher just, salt. It's, uh, kosher salt, do you have that? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So the key here is we've whipped our eggs and we're gonna put in about a quarter of a tablespoon of salt. Now what this does is this helps 
to keep all of the proteins within the eggs from binding together. Tell look about a quarter, about a quarter teaspoon. Did I say yeah. quarter cup? All right, so we're gonna let that sit for 15 minutes. Okay. And this bright yellow color that you see now, that will end up turning into a much darker yellow. Have you ever noticed that when you let eggs sit for a while that the color changes a lot, gets uh, much, much darker? I don't usually stick around that long. So, <laughs> so the salt is going to keep the proteins in the eggs from binding. And we don't want that because that makes the curd much tighter. It squeezes out the moisture, which we don't want. Oh, man, he's got a timer and everything. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. On the clock. My mom Dixon always had fried apples to go with her scrambled eggs. What was that movie? Something about peeling a whole apple in one long strip. Sleepless in Seattle. Mm, I thought you were going to say fried green apples. <laughs> and that was fried green tomatoes. <laughs> Well, I think what I've been missing out on is a cool hat like you've got. But you got this like crocodile Dundee thing going on, which is much cooler than me. The sad thing about it is I got to really take care of this hat now because it's a Shady Brady. And a lot of people know what Shady Brady is. Mm -hmm. He made the coolest hats ever. But he died last summer. And they're closing down, closed up the place. And I can't buy no more of them. We're gonna throw a little bit of this butter, not quite a half a stick in there and get it melted up. All right, in goes the apples. Just give them a little stir around and get them all coated up with that butter. Got an escapee. Jeez, you think they was frogs jumping out of the pan. And what we're gonna do here is just kind of start to brown these apples up a little bit. And then we're going to add some sugar. All right, just for the record, Bill has now brought out a cucumber, which I've never, ever, ever seen on any breakfast menu. Denny's, Shoney's, Hardee's, I've never seen it anywhere. They didn't know Mama Dixon. During the summertime, we had cucumbers from the garden. She'd always cut some cucumbers up to serve with breakfast because something else we're going to make to go along with them eggs, them good old eggs that Dave Parker's got sitting over here in the salt. Now, I ain't never seen that before, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good because he promised it would be. Is we're gonna have some fried country ham, some red-eye gravy, and that red-eye gravy is going over these cucumbers. Just get us some little slices going on. Back to the apples. Let's get our Apples flip over a little bit. They're starting to brown up on the edges. Nice. We're just going to take a little bit of sugar here, maybe a couple teaspoons. Now make that tablespoon. It's time. Eggs are done. Minus seven. Give it a little toss. Apples are starting to brown up nice. Now when, they say, when they say apple a day will keep the doctor away, they probably weren't talking about this, were they? I don't know. Memo led to be 95. She ate them every morning almost. All right, a few slices of country ham. And we're just gonna fry that ham up till it gets a little brown on the outside. I think Bill's is gonna be a lot better than mine. And that's the way it should be. Hey, you can't have a good breakfast if you don't have great eggs. That's, that's true. Can you see the color difference, Bill? If not, I'll have to do that in color grading just Let to make see. sure. So that look, and look, can you can tell the difference, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Quite a bit darker. Nice, nice and rich looking. Right. All right. I've got about a quarter a tablespoon of butter. I put that in there because we're going to add fat to it. So what the butter does is the butter not only is going to add to the creaminess, it also helps these proteins from binding together, making tight curds. We don't want that. Okay, here we go. We got medium heat. We've got our prepared eggs. And look how sunset orange that is. Oh, man. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So the key here is we want to keep moving our eggs. You don't want to let them sit. If you let them sit, that allows the air bubbles to build up. You want to keep breaking up the air bubbles. So we're going to put this in here. We want a low to medium heat. If we add it on a high heat, that increases evaporation of the moisture, which means fluffy. And I don't want them fluffy. I want them nice and dense and creamy. I think you're onto something there, Dave Parker. 
You've had this though. I have. You, <laughs> <laughs> done it a few times and I, just like you've done those apples a few times. All right, Bill, we're gonna take the, uh, we're gonna take this dense and creaminess up a notch. And I got a little bit of a treat right here at the end. Heavy cream, about a half, maybe one tablespoon right there. My mom used to always put that cream in there. Oh yeah. Like so take it off the heat, mix it in, cause you don't want that to curdle. Give it a nice coating. And we're all done. All right. All right. And that is it. Mm. Right, a little coffee into this pan right. here. And Dave, I need you to add yeah. a little dollop of that cream. Okay, about a tablespoon? Yeah. There you go. All right. Perfect. All right, so you got heavy cream, coffee, you got the uh, drippings from your... From the ham from the ham. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. Oh, man, look at this. He's put the uh, ham in there with the eggs. And plus, those two things just naturally go together. You've seen the pig with the apple in its mouth. You know what the <laughs> difference right. be, uh, between being committed in a relationship and being involved in a relationship? What's that? It's like ham and eggs. The chicken is involved. The ham's committed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just dish up a little of this country ham. Put on the plate here. Some of these nice fried green apples. Make us a little room here and put some of these nice fresh sliced cucumbers. You over here. One more. And some of this red eye gravy. Now this right here on these cucumbers and ham is what really sets it off. Perfect. Bill, this looks delicious. I mean, I've never had cucumbers with the breakfast type meal, but you've got gravy, that red eye gravy over it, the ham, the apples, which look perfect. My eggs, which I think are going to be the weak link here. Oh, I don't know, man. That, look at the color of them eggs. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right. Here's to dense and creamy. And here's you have me out to your place. Thank uh, you. Welcome to the been looking, Prairie. Been looking forward to it for a long time. Because you don't want to miss, miss this. <laughs> Lord, thank you so much for bringing Dave down here to visit today and show me how to make these delicious scrambled eggs and just this time together bless this food now to nourish our bodies and strengthen us for life in thee through jesus we pray amen amen mm. a salty. you know a little salty they're a little salty I might but think hey I, put, I, put it, put I got it, something it. to cut salt what is that this is some I didn't know there's... salsa I made a couple days ago. Okay. From tomatoes and jalapeno peppers that I canned up from the garden last summer. But it's got fresh cilantro from this year. Mm. All right. I'm gonna try when that. I was growing up, we always put ketchup on our scrambled eggs. But I've... since I got to be an adult, I use salsa. <laughs> I've never done that. I've never. I know a lot of people put ketchup on their eggs. I've... Not only have I never done it, I've never understood it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up putting ketchup on my steak, too. But mm. that was because when you grew up back in those days and, and on the farm, not that I grew up on the farm, but my daddy did, and, and of course a lot of our influence in the way we ate and cooking was from the farm. And they butchered their own beef. And mm. the old country folks back there, they didn't want to eat a steak medium rare or rare like we enjoy today, they cook it well done, which to me is just ruining it. So we put ketchup on it to give it some flavor. Little, right. Mm. The gravy is delicious. The apples are fantastic. Mm. All we need is your biscuits. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. it's three o'clock in the afternoon and breakfast has never tasted so good. This is why they have 24-hour breakfast now. Oh, yeah. I hop. They're up all the time for breakfast. 
when I was running the fishing center, we had this girl that worked at the at the counter with mm -hmm. us. Her name was Shelly. Gorgeous, beautiful blonde girl. Everybody loved her. So some tourist comes in and wants to know where the International House of Pancakes is. Skip Feller, one of the captains, was standing there and he said, just go over the bridge down General Booth Boulevard, about three miles, it's on the left. Shelley says, Skipper, that is not, that's AHA. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a definite blonde moment for right. Shelley. <laughs> Actually, these eggs are good. All right, so tell me again how to make the red-eye gravy. Well, it's pretty simple. First, you got to buy ham that's got a little bit more fat on it. Okay. And, and um, just brown your ham up in the pan. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Take it out and leave the drippings in there. And it probably would have been better if I had used a smaller skillet than I used for just us two because it would have made the column the liquid column a little higher in the pan okay. and uh, just dump you some black coffee in there in the drippings and stir it around and then a little bit of that cream like you did and that's it. How about that? <clears throat> we have a Keurig at home. I wonder if that makes that harder. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I think I got one. A Keurig? Hold on. You think you have one. It's a little dusty since I got electricity. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. That is <clears throat> your modern day cure. They have them in every Hilton across the country. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Dave, thank you for coming out and teaching me how to cook them eggs, man. Sure. I'm gonna tell you what. I can't believe I oversalted them. Uh, it's gonna take no. me a while to I get over. I think that was my fault. <laughs> On account, I made you let them sit in the salt too long while I was trying to fry up the apples. Well, thank you for having me out. I, you know, I love looking at your place on videos, and it's what a great travel video. You only have to travel 30 minutes and get to come out and see see you. It's a good thing maybe you didn't bring that motorcycle because a lot of these roads right now are flooded. You see right. that tidal flood. That. All right, buddy. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Dave. All right, we'll see you. See you again, buddy. Now that was a great breakfast, even if it was three o'clock in the afternoon. And that, girls and boys, is what's cooking on the Pungo Prairie.